This summer, I studied various populations of cacti in the genus Sclerocactus. Both Sclerocactus parviflorus and Sclerocactus ridei, an endangered endemic species, are native to the southwest United States, specifically the Colorado Plateau in southeastern Utah. Two potential hybrid populations of Sclerocactus were identified in Capitol Reef National Park near the Water Pocket Fold. In order to determine the true identity of these populations, I decided to collect morphological data to compare physical characteristics as well as use microsatellite analyses. While in the field, morphological characteristics alone were not enough to determine the identity of these potential hybrids. They had too many shared similarities between the potential parent species. In order to answer the questions I had about these populations, I collected spines and brought them back to the lab at the Chicago Botanic Gardens. Before extracting the DNA, I rinsed the spines in a diluted bleach solution followed by two water rinses in order to get rid of any potential contaminants that were still on the spine. Unlike most DNA extractions, some extra preparations of the sample were required. Because spines are such a tough plant tissue, they had to be clipped into tiny pieces so that the genetic material could be isolated from the cells. I used nail clippers that had a compartment to capture all of the fragmented spine pieces. This process was extremely time consuming and took a lot of patience. Typically, two to three spines were clipped per individual that tissue was collected from. Unlike other cactus tissue, such as flowers or the actual fleshy green part, the removal of spines does not damage the plant, and it greatly reduces the amount of mucilaginous waste produced during the extraction. The use of spines also aided in decreasing the number of co-precipitants present when the DNA pellet was rehydrated. In order to avoid contamination, one pair of clippers was used per individual sample. Once the spines had been clipped and were contained in the clipper compartment, they were then transferred into extraction tubes. Clippers were cleaned in a 50% ethyl alcohol solution between samples to ensure that tissue from the previous sample had been completely removed. The spine clippings then underwent a CTAB extraction protocol to isolate the DNA. As you can see, this method produces little to no mucilaginous waste, but the samples do have a reddish-brown tint on occasion. 